Welcome to an Alaska homestead where we're becoming more self-sufficient on a remote island in Southeast Alaska. Before I plant my vegetables, I always uh, use some starter mix. It's just down to earth. I really, really love it. It's organic. I'm not selling it. I just really love it. I um, use all down to earth products on all my vegetables. I use starter mix in the beginning. As the months go on, I use a vegetable fertilizer for the rest of my garden and I've just had wonderful organic results and I love it. So um, give it a try and let me know what you think of it. Okay, that's great. Okay, Southeast Alaska, I need some sun this year. Just like the first year I planted and I thought I was God's gift to planting and everything grew. And then the next three years, nothing grew. So give me some, give me some sun. All right, so while my wife's uh, gonna finish up in the greenhouse, I'm gonna come out here and start assembling the uh, bouge 180 solar panel. Uh, they reached out to us and said that they would like us to try out their product. I said, absolutely, we'll try this out. What I want to do with this thing is, is to hook it up out here and we want to be able to, to uh, run the chicken lights and the chicken uh, water heater off of DC power. So uh, let's get started and get this thing set up. All right, so now we need to go get something to, to mount this thing to. So I've got some old scrap lumber over here. We'll go over there and get that, uh, get that thing cut up to size and then uh, get this thing assembled. These are some of the extra pieces from our, um, from our raised bed. I think this one. I don't know, that one's probably the same, the right size. Yeah, that, that one will work. So that box is four foot wide, so that's about as wide as we need this to be. So we'll mark these at four foot. See. Just go this route. There we go. All right, so now that we've got our wood mounted to the box, uh, it's time for us to put the hardware on the panel. So it comes with uh, it comes with four nuts and bolts and washers and a lock washers, and then it comes with these um, self-tapping screws. Um, I might switch the self-tapping out for um, I might switch the self-tapping out for some nuts and bolts because I think that's going to fit my application better because I'm using wood I and, and I may I may switch to a like a metal bracket system later on that way I can raise and, and lower and adjust the angle of this but as of right now this is summertime the sun 
is pretty much directly above us at like 9 a.m. at this point in time. So uh, that's just something that I might do in the future. But I wanted to get this all set up and get it tested out. But yeah, in the winter, I'll definitely need to angle this up quite a bit. There you go, so now all the brackets are on, we can get this thing assembled. Let's see if, if our mathematics paid off. I guess we should unzip this. How's that look? That looks good. All right, let's get this backside mounted up. There she goes, she's solid now. Yeah, that's on there, that didn't do the trick. All right, so now it's time for us to hook up our components. So it comes with a set of wires that goes from your solar panel to your charge controller, and then another set of wires that goes from your charge controllers to your batteries. And then it's up to you to get the wires to the um, whatever your load's gonna be going to. All right, so we're gonna get these cut down to size. Get this to just take just this top part off. There we go, that's what we wanted. There we are, Put this thing on there. There we go, that's one down. And then we'll do the, the ground, we'll be good to go. Uh oh, I've got an assistant coming. Hello, assistant. Okay, yeah, I don't think you need, listen, this ain't, hey, this ain't nothing to eat, look. Okay, go on, go on, go on guys, go on. Huh? No, go on. All right, so now it's time for us to wire everything together. Uh, I've always been told to wire up your, um, wire everything up first, then connect your panel. So that's the route I'm going to go. Negative. And this would be just temporary. I need to get a, a longer, some longer cable and connect them together. And then I can set this inside the, um, then I can set this inside the chicken coop because that's where I want this stuff to be. There you go, so there's the cables to our solar panels. And we've got a, a positive and a negative for the batteries. There we go. Then we'll get the batteries wired up and I'll have to go buy some smaller wire. We're just gonna run a little test light out here to see how it, uh, how it works. We just connected the solar panels to the charge controller and it says we're pulling in 14.7 volts right now. I don't have the batteries hooked up so I'm gonna need to hook the batteries up and then that will start charging these batteries. Okay, so we just connected the batteries up there. So now it says we've got 13.9 volts pulling. Some of it's going to the battery, 7.8 amps. I have to go get some smaller wire. We'll hook up a small little light to this, like a little floodlight, and uh, stick it up underneath here, and we'll see see what happens from there. So it's a 180 watt solar panel. It's going on at either a 12 or a 20 volt system, and uh, right now on a 12 volt system, it's pumping in 14.1 
volts. So the sun's pretty much right overhead right now. So and it's a, and it's no clouds in the sky really. So that's these are like optimal conditions for us because typically here in Southeast Alaska we're uh, overcast. Uh, but it's it's working it's working good. What we've got here is a small little floodlight for a vehicle. We're gonna hook this humdinger up and see if she works. There we go. Look at there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look. There you go. There you go. That's all we really need in the winter time. All we really need is just a light to light up the inside of the chicken coop because it gets, you know, in the dead of winter, it'll get daylight like around 10 o'clock maybe. And then uh, it gets dust like around three o'clock. So uh, that way they can come out a little earlier than sunrise and stay up a little later than sunset. And we might even be able to put this thing on a timer so it will come on automatically and shut off automatically. So anyways, I'm super excited about this. Let's, I'll get the light taken off, but we'll let the batteries charge up. Ain't gonna hurt them to charge the batteries while we got sunlight like this. Well, that was a fun little project. So the key features to these panels are that they're uh, super durable, IP65, they've got a 22% higher conversion rate. So if you're interested in checking out these solar panels, down in the description, I'll have a link. And if you use the code Alaska, you'll get 12% off of all their products on Shopify. So anyways, like like I said, uh, these things are, are they're for RVs or a, a sailboat. These would work really good on, or just a, you know, a large, larger boat that you want to collect uh, some solar power from, uh, these would be idea. Um, I would even, if I had more of these, I would even, when we get our, our barn built, I would hook these up and use them in the barn. Uh, I mean, they're 180, they're 180 volt solar panel. I'm, I'm super impressed. Really impressed. We'll, we'll uh, give an update in a few months and, and see how things are going when we get everything all set up. but. I'm really, uh, I'm really excited to see how this thing works. Anyways, uh, let's, let's, uh, we've got this project knocked out. Let's go over there and help my wife in the garden now. All right, we're gonna go in the greenhouse and see what my wife has going on. What? Hey, babe. Hello, lover. How are you? <laughs> Holy smokes, you've got more stuff planted in here. Well. So what, is this all tomatoes? These are all tomatoes. We have the big bush right here. Big bush? Big big bush. <laughs> <laughs> I love bush. And then babe. <laughs> and then we have our little cherry tomatoes over here. We have a couple more over here. Those are t cherry tomatoes over here? Yep. And then um, these are going to be my cucumbers. Hopefully they will. These are all cucumbers here? Yep. Hopefully they will survive the transplant. And this is lavender from last, last year. Last year, yeah. It survived. I can't believe it. Are you growing barnacles? I am. That's nice. Wait a minute. peek a oh, get, oh, get out of get there. Get out of there. <laughs> Come on, Ray. Uh, Skipper. <laughs> you can't be in here. You got to go out. Come on, Skipper. Come on, buddy. And then let's, go. let's see what I have next is um, I have celery in here. Come look. Well, that, that's all celery? This is all celery. Wow. I've never done celery before. So hopefully. Is it going to grow? I don't know. Is it a cold crop or it, it is. They said it was a cold crop. I've never done celery. So we'll see if that grows. And then over here, I decided that I needed to put up some deer fence. But for the chickens, because just in case the chickens get in, they find a hole somewhere. I don't know where, but they keep coming in. So, did you I, cut this, or was this already cut? This was already cut, so I need to do that little area right there. Oh yes. And in here, I've already seeded this, and this is um, red peppers. Um, this is our double hoop, and so we need. So we to, need to put the second thing of plastic on. We need to. On. Yep, we need to finish our double hoop. It fell apart last year after a storm, so we need to do some minor adjustments on it, and hopefully, I can get some peppers to grow in here. Um, Marquita on the other side of the island. Um, I asked if I could have a couple of her plants, so um, hopefully she has some extras I can throw in here also. So we'll listen. I took Raven swimming on the other side of the island and Marquita and her friend are over there sunbathing uh, because they said it was too hot in the greenhouse. <laughs> it is hot in the greenhouse today. It's like 80 degrees in there. So it's, it's hot. And then I have 
right in the middle of planting my zucchinis. So um, hopefully it'll be hot enough this summer. Please God, give me some sun. Um, for, for the zucchinis to grow, the very first time I did my garden was when we had like 80 degrees all summer long. And I thought, oh my God, I had hundreds. You go, I'm a natural green thumb. I did. I, we had hundreds of zucchini and I was like, this is so great. And of course our typical summers came back and I like had one zucchini <laughs> last year. That was it. It was like that big. <laughs> it was after hundreds of zucchinis. So I'm hoping this year we'll, we'll have a repeat of the first year. You know, just if I get a couple, I'll be happy. Yeah. So we'll see. Do you want to give us a rundown of what's going to go in and what bed, or should we just? No, I think I kind of just I haven't I haven't really planned it out yet. So maybe at the end we'll go through and I'll sh Gardening show you. Gardening one hundred and one. Yeah. Plan it out. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I I plan it out and then I just end up switching it up. So we'll see at the end of our planning what's in what. Well, it looks good, and we still got to plant our flowers. Oh yeah, we need to get our seeds out. We move we move this guy inside because but look who the already, chickens got in there already again and then last year right at the end of the season deer came through and just ate the tops off of everything so but this stuff's already starting to grow back what what the chickens didn't um kill yes there was a lot more in there but we'll, as you can we'll see, see look at look yeah. at all the dirt they already went Bunch through of footprints in there yeah <laughs> <laughs> and so i don't know what we're going to do with the two beds on the outside over there we might have to get a little deer fence and put around there to keep the chickens out of that too yeah i was thinking put about it that. up when the chickens come out and yeah. take it down if we were entertaining yeah i guess so because we don't ever entertain yeah we, we let our, <laughs> our chickens free range 90 percent of the time now so yeah we've had they do a lot of damage that's for well, sure they do do a lot of damage <laughs> uh we've had the eagles were on the moose. Eagles didn't care about the chickens. We've had two hawks fly by and they didn't, I mean, obviously hawks will attack chickens, but they didn't seem to care. They they were looking for smaller game, I guess. Or maybe Rocky was Alerted intimidating enough, enough. Yeah, I don't know. So we're, we're, we're still, we still keep our eye out for the hawks when they're, when they're out free ranging, but. They pretty much. But so far they've done good. Yeah, they pretty much go way down to the neighbor's house down there and way down to the neighbor's house down there and sleep in the woods with, which I always worry about because there's so many Meeks and Martins in the woods, but so I, far. I actually lost my chainsaw goggles cause I had them. So I had my hat turned around backwards like this. And I had my goggles on my head <laughs> and I saw the chickens that were way over there on the corner. And I was like, let me go get them. And I went, I was going through all the brush trying to flush them out onto the beach so I could get them back over here. And I, my hat kind of got knocked off. I didn't think nothing of it. Then when I got back, I was like, where's my goggles at? So God. I had to order another set. But they're like 40 bucks, I think. So they ain't cheap. <laughs> them but I was actually, I, I had, uh, I would told her to put super glue on the list because the little foam stuff. I'd had them for, I don't know, four or five years now. The little foam thing that like seals it against your face was all peeling apart. And I was like, I'm going to have to super glue it. So maybe it's for the best. Maybe it's time to get new just ones. get some new ones anyways. Look at our hummingbird feeders. They've just come through and. Yeah, the hummingbird feeders are empty. We need to make more because. I know. They just came and drank all that. They had sucked it up. All right. I'm going to let you get back to it. Did you see what I did? I haven't. You want to show me? Sure. Okay. Pretty snazzy, huh? I know. So if we get enough sun in the winter, then this should charge. It, this should be able to power the the this, heater, the, the heater, and the the light when we turn it on in the morning, and then and turn it on at night if we want to. No, oh, that'd, that'd be, be awesome. Nice. Yeah. Wow, that's great. But it's still sucking in the sun right now, and we love it. That's look how, perfect. I can't even look at look at that. Oh, it's so bright. <laughs> It's nice having them out here because like our panels are already behind the trees. Maybe we'll have to take down some trees right there and get a little more sunlight in the, in the late afternoon. The moose is back. Uh, it washed up yesterday. Uh, funny story. Uh, so we, the moose disappeared and then it washed up on a friend of ours beach. 
about a mile or so away and um, not a couple miles away. Anyway, so we called and apologized to him and, uh, you know, said we were going to go out and sink it. Anyway, so he said, no problem. I took it out and I shot it with the, uh, some uh, shotgun slugs and put about 10 holes in it and it, it should sink. Anyways, long story short, it's back on our beach. So it's just doing a big circle. <laughs> Just doing a big surf, going from island to island. Uh, so we're gonna go uh, take it over, pick it up with a forklift, take it over by the boat, and then uh, try to take it out in the middle, like an 80-foot water or something, and, and sink it. The water's a little rough today, so uh, I don't know how much filming we'll get done, but anyways, that's our game plan. I had to put my bandana on because that thing was stinky. All right, so we're going to get our boat in the water. We're going to try to just sink it right here. We've got 80 foot of water right out here this is in the deep spot. So we're going to see if we can sink it right there. We'll, hopefully we will. If not, we're going to have to wait until tomorrow because it's pretty windy. There's like four footers out there and that's the way we wanted to go with it. So wish us luck. Because the wind was blowing pretty good, uh, it was hard enough just to keep the boat on a straight course and, and so we didn't really get any footage of us in the boat with the moose, but uh, rest assured the moose sunk. Uh, we, it's been a few days now, I've called our buddy over on the other island. He hasn't seen the moose, we haven't seen the moose, so I'm hoping the moose is crab bait and uh, that's, that's it. That's the end of the moose story. All right, well, that's going to sum it up for this video. We appreciate you guys watching. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up button down below. And remember, live free.